And uh, yeah, then, I mean, it's so it's like everything, I just tossed everything that I had inside of me into the books. It's like a huge, huge brain, brain, drum, brain dump, but it's very sophisticated. So it's, it's organized. So it's chaos, but organized chaos. Okay. Yeah. I mean, right now you're saying a lot of marketing words, right? So I'm <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let me send my book. <laughs> Who holds the marketing? Does she do the marketing for your yeah, she, book? Yeah, I mean, uh, she does the marketing for her store. Okay. So if she thinks my book is like aesthetic enough for her, like, you know, store, she'll like showcase it in her marketing. Like if she did like a local author's yeah. day event, she'll showcase my book. Okay. Okay, wait, yeah. I wasn't loud enough? Okay. So yeah, when she does marketing for her events or for her bookstore, and if my book is like fit enough for it, She'll showcase my book in it. it. This is this is past or present? This is, I mean, ongoing. I mean, because whenever she showcases her like store, because one is a twelve and one is a fourteen, so we're talking about six yeah, years. Yeah, both back. of them. Yeah. So, when uh, the, the twelve one, she did the marketing for the event because it was at her, her store. So she did the mm. event. She posted it on her like account on her bookstore account, and she told people to like come, you know, join us. And then obviously, I got my like sort of like my family, my friends, all of them to join in too. But there were a lot of people that just, because it was happening in the store and like the books were still being sold. So people would come in to buy something and they would, they would see like, so someone is standing and speaking mm. and like talking to an audience. So they would just sit and they would start watching because there was no entry fee. We didn't believe in that. We were like, to hell with it. You know? oh, okay. So it was just like free, just free come for all. Like anyone can come, sit, watch. Okay. And then there was also like a part where you could buy the copy of the book in the store and then I would sign it in person for you on the spot. Okay. So we had like a whole red carpet and like a whole, what well, do you that's call it? Cool. A banner and everything. It was, it was super cool, yeah. And I, like, I mean, I was 13 at that time. So for me, it was like, wow, I'm it's like a celebrity. It's very stressful. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, I was like, wow, I'm a celebrity. Everyone's like looking at me and everyone's like here to sort of, you know, give me the importance. So yeah, it was, it was a great time. Yeah, it was okay. so fun, yeah. And then we, you, you took a break for almost, what, two years between writing? I did, I did. I think, wait, was it during COVID? I don't, I don't remember, but I think it was when I was sort of like focusing more on school, because, you know, my parents were like, we're at school, you know, you have to g g finish school, you can't just uh, write books for your whole life, so. I sort of focused. Isn't that what an author does? But, yeah. Okay. But like, I was like 30, 12, so they were like, you know, you need to finish school. You need okay. to finish your education. Also, are we already recording or? Oh, ages ago. Ages, really? Okay, yeah. wait. Let me know because I want to fix my hair. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Looks fine. Okay. So, yeah. And then I took a break for two years to focus on school, but I was still writing. So I was writing in that period, but I wasn't like publishing anything or like putting a book, like putting it into a book. But then when I think four months before I published my second book, that's when I started working on it. So I started working on the cover. But like we were taking photographs for the book since like a year, like for one year, we were like literally compiling photographs. So if the... Let's, oh, sorry, sorry. I have to interrupt here. First of all, describe what the second book is before you talk about what the pictures are oh God. <laughs> and, the, okay, yeah. and the process of, of making okay. it because for people listening they're very confused <laughs> okay so the second book Sorry. is called unsaid mm -hmm. um for the audience listeners the, the 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 summary is unsaid is a collection of poetry and poses that deal with the raw and silent thoughts of emotions of people with unsaid the author hopes to shed light of unspoken feelings of people that they fear to utter out loud yeah so what fears were you scared of uttering out loud? <laughs> I mean, okay, so this book, it, it is called Unsaid, and even the bio says that it's like fear of things that I didn't say out loud, but it's a bit of everything. I did say these things out loud, but then I ended up putting them in the book too. And majority of the book is a lot of the thoughts that I had that I never like voiced them out to people or even, you know, family or friends, but I had them in my head and I put them into poetry and then I put them into the book. Incredible sale, but <laughs> that was, that, that, now for, of course people have an option to go and purchase it and I'd recommend people purchasing it obviously to, to, to read, but can you go a little bit more in depth about it? 
So, okay, it's not a specific genre of poetry even. There is a bit of everything. There is romance, there is uh, like sadness, there is heartbreak, there is repression, there is everything possibly possible that you think. There's even like a page in the book where people can actually write their thoughts on it. It's like a diary entry. Okay. I'll show you one sec. I think I remember which page it is. Well, yep. how about you hold it up in front of the camera? Yep, I'm just going to open it. No, yep. I meant the, the cover. <laughs> oh, yeah, the cover. Okay. There we go. This is the back. Yeah. And then this is the page that I was talking about. It's like you can pen down your unsaid feelings here. Okay. And I have this page and then I have another one somewhere in the book. Oh, I thought you were making a pun. Oh. Because it's called Unsolved Truth, the show, because yeah. you said unsolved so feelings. It is a, okay, yeah, I thought you were going pun. for a pun, but no, okay. I mean, it's a bit of both. You could, you could say that. And uh, yeah, then, I mean, it's so it's like everything. I just tossed everything that I had inside of me into the book. It's like a huge, huge brain, brain, drum, brain dump, but it's very sophisticated. So it's, it's organized. So it's chaos, but organized chaos. Okay. Yeah. I mean, right now you're saying a lot of marketing words, right? So <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let me sell my book. <laughs> That's fine. You can sell your book, but try to make it make it sensible for the for the reader, yeah, right? Yeah. Or for the audience who are listening. The book is about unspoken words and emotions that you are going through, right? Yep. Can you give me a, a, a short poem, anything in the book? So okay, I'm gonna go for one of my favorites. I can't find it. Okay, so yeah, this is one of my favorites. Maybe you should stop looking for love in others and rather seek it out in yourself. Self-love is the best form of love. So it's pretty short and it's pretty simple. Like it's not hard to understand, but for me it was important to put this in there because I think at that age, like especially when you're like a teenager, like a preteen or like, you know, in the phases of your life and you're hitting puberty, I think it's so hard for people to like look at others and like, get really insecure, you know, oh, am I good enough? Am I fat enough? Am I thin enough? Am I skinny enough? And uh, I got lost in that strain of thought as well. Like I was like, wait, am I, you know, I'm not gaining weight. I need to gain weight. People are calling me skinny. Or, you know, I would look at my friends and she would be like, I'm too fat. I need to lose weight. You know, should I start dieting? And we were like 13, 14 and I was like, now that I think about it, I'm like, why were we even thinking about these things at that age, you know? At that age, we should just be focusing on school, we should be focusing on fun, we should be focusing on, you know, uh, like, oh, sh uh, what are you wearing tomorrow to this, you know, where are you wearing tomorrow to the ball, where are you wearing tomorrow to the party? To the ball? To, to the party. Like, we had, okay. a, we had, like, a ball in our school, you know, like a prom, we could call it farewells, like, whenever the school year would end. Okay. So, like, I... Th you went to a very westernized school then? No, I went to an Indian school. Okay. Yeah. But for me, so that's what I've thought that we should be focusing on. But obviously at that age, we were more focused on like our hair, our nails, our clothes, our hands. Like, oh, do, does my hand look pretty enough? I know it's so strange. We were, we were like, oh, my hands are too black. And I was like, does it even make sense? Like, it's something that God gave you. So you can't really change it. Like, do you want to like whiten your hand or like somehow burn it and make it a different color? No, you can't. So for me, it was super important to put this in. Okay. And I only, um, I think even as you grow up, it's still a battle to realize like that you're perfect the way you are. It's such a cliche thing to say, but you really are. Like, I think people even way older than me still, I think, have a hard time understanding that and realizing that. So when yeah. you say perfect the way you are, what frame are you talking? What, what frame are you saying that in? Like, in what context? Just like you're perfect the way you are, like your personality is perfect the way you are. I mean, unless you're like a super mean person. Okay, so like, <laughs> then you're not perfect when you are. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, you see, if you're a psychopath, okay, then like obviously you're not perfect the way you are and you need help. Okay. But I'm just talking about like people who, you know, just feel too down. Like they look at others and they're like, wait, why am I, like, why do I not look like that? Why do I not, like, you know. So what about someone who's bulimic? Then there's bulimic means, you don't know what bulimic is? Wait, no, is it? It's people who, who like eat and then vomit. Vomit, oh to yeah, get okay, skinny. okay, like anorexic people. Oh, it, yeah. I mean, okay, in that case, that's what I'm then telling Then you're not them. perfect what you are. No, want. I'm telling them that you are perfect the way you are. So like stop doing that, like stop eating and then vomiting, right? Okay. So like you're perfect the way you are before you eat and you vomit. Like you're perfect the way you are. Okay. Yeah.
I'm not sure I agree <laughs> with that statement. No, I don't. I mean, it's cliche to say, and like probably like everyone says it. Oh, you're perfect the way you are. Oh, you're perfectly perfect. But yeah, you are. I feel like that belitters people. I think people should, you know, a man's reach should ex exceed his yeah, grasp. I mean, you should always look for improvements in yourself. You should always like look out, you know, for flaws in yourself and be like, okay, wait, am I doing this correctly? Like, am I being, am I in the wrong here or am I in the right here? Like you should always have those like sort of like self-realizations, but I don't think you should like reach to a point where you're neglecting yourself so much that what others say is what you think, you know, you should be doing. Like if others You're say, taking this to a very dark place where I would not was taking that to. <laughs> so see, that's what I mean, right? So like just you're perfect the way you are. I totally disagree. I think people should go and work out, should, you know, yeah. get See, read books. Obviously, if, if there are improvements, then you should make them, but... Then you're not perfect, then. Okay, okay. It's like in university. You are, you're perfect in your own way. By the way, in university, in, at least with my lectures, they would never grade. It doesn't matter how good your paper was. And in fact, if a different uh, professor was writing that paper to get it tested by a different professor, mm -hmm. the max grade they would get is 80%. Because the assumption is that there is nothing better that yeah. you could have done in that essay. I mean, see, okay, same. Because, like, you know how schools never give you, like, 100% on English? Except in math, yeah. In, yeah, they only give you, like, 99. Like, they would give you 99.9, .9, but they wouldn't give you a full 100 because no one's, like, English is perfect. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, but I just, okay. Maybe we'll change it up. We'll say... <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're, you're no, I don't me. like, I don't like no, these, like, you've context. you've convinced me. You've convinced me. Okay. You're not perfect the way you are. Sure. You're... Improve yourself. Yeah, improve. <laughs> work, <laughs> go and work out. That's it. <laughs> go and work out. Don't slouch. Don't, there we don't go. See? Okay. Now we're speaking the same language. That's book number three. Uh, you, uh, that's book number three. No, that's book number two. I only wrote two books. No, book number three will be forget being perfect. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta okay. go sort out your life. Idea. Yeah. That's what I'm going to write about. Um, yeah. And I'm going to literally feature young women. This book is inspired by... Hi, this podcast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. All right. So, so away from the, you're perfect. The, by the way, that's like a very Western mentality that's only propped up in the last you could twenty that. years. You could. No, absolutely. It's it's the complete Western mentality. The ideology of of perfection is the way you are, and that you don't need to improve yourself. You know, yeah. I mean, I get it. It's. I think because I don't know over there, people are more depressed. Do you, what do you, I mean, you, do you, have you suffered through depression or do you have, have you had friends who've gone through depression? No, because I don't want to self-diagnose myself. So I wasn't. I don't think, yeah. Because I didn't go to, go to a doctor and like actually get myself diagnosed. Like, do I have depression? And then the doctor said, yeah, you do. No, but I did have friends who like had a full proper diagnose and then they were taking meds for it. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen it both ways. I've seen people self-diagnose themselves. I'm seeing people like actual like people who have depression and they're going through it. And I think it's a, it's a term that's thrown out very loosely. Well, the reason I bring this up is from, from some of our recurring viewers know this. Uh, we looked this up last time and depression is, is massively, massively misdiagnosed um, or overly diagnosed. Yeah. And I think it was like 90% of, diagno of diagnosis of depression is actually false. Same Seriously. as with bipolar, oh. and the same is what was the third one, Dan? Do you remember? One was, yeah, that's the one. What was it? BBD. Oh, okay. Borderline, borderline personality, personality disorder. disorder. Yeah. yeah, all three yeah. of them are are massively uh, uh, overdiagnosed or falsely diagnosed. Wait, why diagnosed. do you think that is? Are therapists just like not doing their job? <laughs> well, therapists are human beings, right? But like, isn't it their job to diagnose people? So like. You're saying that even doctors are human beings, so like if they mess up on a surgery. Yeah, I mean, there's... If, this, if they say someone you have cancer, but the person actually doesn't have cancer, so... Well, I we mean, can, it, it, listen, it's, 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 a difficult, it's a difficult answer because there isn't, you know, we like the idea of just having a simple solution of just being like, oh, you know, the therapists are bad, therefore, right? I mean, no, they're not. They're, it's, it's not an if-then statement. Yeah. What about yourself? You want to stay in Bahrain or you want to study I'm outside? Literally, my flight is literally next week. Hey, I'm where going, are you going? I'm going to Manchester. To Manchester? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Leeds for uni. Leeds? Yeah. All right. Why is that so surprising? <laughs> you don't like Leeds? <laughs> Look, I've never been to it, so I don't know what you're saying. You've never? I've never been to Leeds. 
All right. Have you chosen your university? How's how, what's going the university on? University leads. So, I like my classes start like twenty sixth. So I have to be. But there. you've never been there yet. I've not been there yet. No. I mean, what do you want me to go and take a tour first and then choose my university? It wasn't just possible. So, I had to. Okay. Had Normally, to. there's like an open day for your university. You go and yeah, check it out like, and see. Yeah, but like, we don't have that privilege. And it was like a full time internship, and. Like I got paid so that I couldn't I couldn't take leave. Like they were like, no, we pay you, so you have to stay. If we take leave, yeah, we'll get we'll cut your pay. So this like, sounds like an organization problem, yeah, rather than and not an ability problem. Yeah, see, okay, I could go if I wanted to. There we go. But I just didn't think it was like it was not possible for me during that time. Like I started looking for universities in May. Yeah, so May to now, it's been what I think four months, five okay. months. I don't know how how many for sure. But so my parents were traveling to our hometown, Pakistan. I'm from okay. there originally. So they had to travel there. And my brothers were, you know, we have three cats. Okay. So they had to look after the cats. Um, and I had to be there with them. My So do you have family in the UK then? Uh, yeah, I have my aunt. My dad's sister lives there. In Birmingham? Uh, no, she lives in Derby. Derby? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all over the place. So yeah. Have you, you've never been to Manchester? No, I've never been to Manchester. They're all, they're all fucking Mancunian monks down there. They're <laughs> fucking horrible. I mean, I'm going to Leeds. I'm not going to Manchester. Leeds and much better. Yeah, I'm, my university is in Leeds. I'm just going to Manchester because, you know, you can't go to Leeds airport. You can, okay. Yeah, you, and, okay. Did you get it, right? Because, like, Manchester is easier to, like, fly there and then travel to Leeds. I then. think it's better to go through Birmingham. Really? Yeah, I think Isn't so. Isn't Manchester closer? Birmingham is cheaper, though. I wish you told me this before. Now we all you didn't ask. <laughs> but no, we're, we're traveling through British Airways. So. Gulf is a better airline. Yeah, it is. But I don't. Th I think it's also cheaper than British Airways. No, but no, I looked. It was like six hundred for a ticket, and I was like, what the No, fuck? it's not. I swear, when I looked, three hundred BD. No way. At max, British Airways is three hundred BD. If you're, it's six hundred is business class. Look it up. It literally was. Yeah, I don't need to look it up. I, I have an apartment in London. I go there all the time. But no, where are you traveling though? Then are you traveling to Manchester? Or are you traveling to like? I'm traveling to Heathrow, a more expensive airport okay. than Manchester. So that's where we're going to, right? We're going to Heathrow, then we're going to Manchester, and it's it. What? Yeah, it's literally three hundred. Why are you going to? Because when we booked the flight, we had to do a layover, layover in Heathrow through British Airways. They don't do. A but drive. why wouldn't you take a train? I have too much luggage. Oh, God. How much luggage do you have? Three? I have like six bags. So why don't you just take two with you and the other you just send it over? Oh, okay. You put it up there. Wait, no, look it up for the date that I'm flying. I'm flying on the 13th of September. Yeah, if you're booking it, 13th of what? September. September. Yeah. Yeah, if you're booking it like a week, uh, or like on the look, day. It's like 1,000. It's like 1,000. Look, I told you. Oh, it's not even it's not even six hundred anymore. It's like one thousand. I mean, Swiss right there, it's three hundred, but it's eighteen hour flight. Yeah, I mean, who wants see? Girl Ferry is easier because it's nonstop. That's yeah, but no one's telling you you have to fly on the thirteenth of September. Your university only starts in October. No, it starts in September. No, at end of September. I'm the one who's in the university. I'm the one who graduated from a university. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since then, don't you think? How long has it been? Not that long. I'm not forty. <laughs> I mean, okay, so they're starting classes on the 26th of September. We have to be there by the 19th of September. And my accommodation also like needs us to be there by the 19th of September to like, check in and move in. That's all nonsense. I can tell you, you, can, you, can, it, it, you, have, you have about one week uh, uh, after their deadline, which is, like, which is like student week. Oh, okay. Which like is induction. just nonsense. I should record this from my university and send it to them. Oh, you can. That's why it's called well, Freshers' Week. But yeah, it's it's whatever because my parents are going with me. Okay. So and they they sort of want to like travel around the UK, like London, and I don't know other places. So they're gonna drop me to uni and then they're gonna go off their own way. So fun times. I'm. St I still don't know why you're going from Heathrow to Manchester by plane. You know, we have an eight-hour layover in Heathrow. So why wouldn't you take the train? Oh, oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Isn't it cheaper just to send your suitcases? I don't know. I haven't looked at that. No, you you're giving me new options when I'm, I've already booked my flight. Literally, it's literally next Tuesday. 
Next Tuesday. You Today's can, Tuesday, next Tuesday. You can get a whole container, a whole container for um, $600, 200 BD. A whole container. You can fit two cars in the container. Really? Yeah, container's pretty big. How safe big. is that, though? No one's telling you to go in a container to travel. <laughs> I mean, like, how safe is my luggage in it? Because I'm taking, I'm like, Very. literally. Okay. Safer than an airplane. Really? Yes. Okay, wow. I did not know this. I had no clue that you could book a container. Okay. I don't know. Well, I thought you could just, like... Like, things happen. People do things, right? I mean, like... How do people send books and, and stuff like that? Okay, that's what, like, literally half of my suitcase is books. It's like my whole library into my suitcase. So why are you traveling with books? Why don't you just get yourself a Kindle? No, I like paperbacks and, like, hardcovers. Like, I read, I read on my phone or, like, my Kindle. Okay. And then I buy the books physically. It's a bad, it's a bad habit, but I love it. It's but why would you put up with the headache, though? It's so, it's such a, it's just. It's so snobbish. It's, it's <laughs> addicting. It's, no, it's snobbish. It gives me, it gives me happiness. It gives me joy. I love it. And I'm not stopping. <laughs> this is what I meant by you have to improve yourself. See, you're perfect the way you are. No, you're, you're not. You're traveling with six suitcases. So you're joining, a fr you're going into to, to foundation year now. Yep. Like I dropped out of high school in 11th grade. So like all of my classmates are now in 12th grade, but I dropped out of 11th grade and now I'm doing foundation year and then I'm going to go into my bachelor's. So do you have to go through, you had to do an IELTS exam though. Yeah, I did it. I got like eight, eight point five or something. Do you need an IELTS to go on foundation? Yeah, yeah, you do. I think I you did do. it. So you do. I did it in March and it was like 8.5. So I was good. Can you, Dan, can you look up Leeds University? I wonder if that's the same university that my cousin's going to. It could be. It's, I heard it's like full of Arabs? people. Yeah, Arabs. I don't know if Leeds. It's full of. I think it is Leeds the capital of, of the gays. Of the what? Of the gays. Of the gays. Yeah, like I think Leeds is like I thought Leeds is. As you read culture in Leeds. Yeah, I think it is. Leeds is the best gay-friendly. Yeah, I think it is. The, oh. I think like per capita, there's, Very nice. there's more LGBT people in Leeds than anywhere else. That's... I think. That's strange. But no, I mean, that's not strange. That's good. Welcome. I mean, I'm going to your country. So, good. Not, what do you mean my country? I don't, what? <laughs> Their country. I'm talking, okay. to, I'm talking to them. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's Very like... Nice. Tell you the whole history? Okay, wow. That's great. That's super cool. Can you look up, is, is, is Leeds famous for, for inbreds? <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a joke in the UK about, about, I think it's Leeds. Like that everyone there has six fingers. What? Leeds and... Is it West Yorkshire, oh right? Oh my God. Yeah. Wait, did they like marry their cousins or what, what, what are they doing over there? <laughs> oh my God. No way. What Shit. did it say there? In 2018, more incest in West Yorkshire than the rest of England, parts of Wales, uh, according to crime maps. <laughs> what does that even... Wait, like, did they marry their cousins or what? Like, well, like... you go to some towns and they only have like two... La There's only like like a whole town of, of 300 people, 500 and people. And they're all like family. They're all like... They all connected. have two last names. It's either like West or Jim. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it's it's so big. It's also big in like Desi culture, by the way. Spotify, Burnley inbreds. Yeah, I think it's Leeds. I'd I'd have to ask oh, my cousin if he's there. Oh, why did you ruin it for me? I haven't been there yet, yet. And I'm always gonna like go up to people and be like, "Are you an inbred? You look weird. Are you an inbred?" You, I, 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 I don't remember. I went to my my cousin's university, and. I remember going through the town and then just staring at people because they're not symmetrical. That's so bad. <laughs> like That's you, not... you walk down the street and you know there's oh my like God. you're just like staring at people. You're like, That's that oh doesn't my God. No. They're not right. Something isn't right with that. Oh God. I think it was Leeds. Oh God. Manchester's horrible by the way. Yeah, I I know. I know. Because there is also an option of like going to University of Manchester and I was like no. Why didn't you go to London? 
I didn't get offers from universities there. Well, just apply. <laughs> I mean, I did get from one, but I didn't like it. Which one? I think it was like, what? what is it called? It's something with B. If you're going to say Westminster, we would have gotten in a fight. No. <laughs> That's my university. Oh, it is? Okay. Westminster, yeah. No, I, I didn't apply there. So. Westminster was... It is and anyone also, else. again, another thing, not all of them offer like a foundation year. King's College does. They do, but like, I don't think they do to like, you know, like people who haven't graduated, graduated high school yet. Because I only have transcripts till 11th grade. Mm. So... Oh, no, they don't care. Really? Yeah. Because like I looked up and then there because were a lot you're, of Because you're, you're paying like 18K. Oh. 7,000 BD, I, I mean, think. I'm paying like 19K for leads, so. So exactly. So okay. they're very happy to get to get international students. They just want money. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> UK students, they only get like, I think, six or eight, but they get twice or three Home times fees. that amount. Home tuition. Yeah, exactly. We're like, they're literally, they're money makers. And so uh, how, do you find an apartment or? Um, I'm living in student accommodation but my student accommodation is so fancy it has like a freaking bowling alley in the building yeah yeah, that's very normal and i was like what it is yeah so leads why i just i don't understand okay how did you apply by the way okay so when i was looking at unis i looked at unis that like offer a foundation year because obviously i need that and oxford offers foundation year but no they don't they don't like they don't offer it for like people who don't have their, you know, they don't have, they don't, haven't graduated high school. Just email them. Call them. <laughs> just call them up. Yeah. Just call them up. Just get in touch. Just. Well, that's what I did. Really? And what did they say? That's how it was. So I was, I was originally meant to go to Princeton. Oh, and wow. uh, my mom, I was, I, th- I was 19 at the time. Uh, um, 19 or so. Uh, I was meant to go to Princeton. My mom called me or talked to me or said, hey, you know what? You're the youngest kid. I don't want you to go to America. You're half Arab, all this kind of stuff. You're not going to like it. You're going to have issues and stuff like that. And uh, this was one week before I was meant to go. So we're talking about September 12th. So I had to try to find a university if I wanted to get into that year. And I just called a bunch of them. And Westminster was one of them that said, yeah, we've got space. And I went to check it out. And they had a ton of Russian girls. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm done. Sign me I'm up. I'm done. This is, this is what I needed. Yeah. Russian girls. Perfect. So that's how I chose my university. Well, great. Okay. My process was a bit more academic. I applied to a bunch of universities. They wanted my transcripts. They wanted my, like, literally, like, my whole entire life history. I was like, wait, do you want me to give you a medical tool? Like, take it. And then they wanted my IADS. And obviously, and then what else did they need? Yeah, they needed like a bunch of letters from my dad, from my parents. It could be because A, I'm Pakistani. So. I don't know what you're trying to say with that. I mean, obviously, they're going to be a bit more, you know. In the UK? Yeah, they're going to scrutinize a bit, like applicants. Almost all, all of fucking Birmingham is brown. But that doesn't make a difference because when I was applying, they did tell me, they even told me they were like, you're from Pakistan, so we have to do it like, a, like an additional interview with you. I was like, but I live in Bahrain. I have a, I've lived, I was born here, I was raised here. My parents have been here for like 20 years. Oh, but you don't have a Bahraini passport. So. Exactly. So they were like, no, that's, you don't have a Bahraini passport. I was like, I have a permit. Does it not count? And she was like, no. Okay. It doesn't. So I had to like give them like three interviews and I was like, I'm done with this. Like, do I even want to go there anymore? But no, it did. Like it ended up like you know, going through in the end and... Can you yeah. check for me, Dan? Does Oxford um, or Cambridge offer a foundation year? I think they do. They might, but universities usually offer like a foundation year after you're finished high school. No, I, it doesn't matter. You can go, you can start 16 foundation year. Really? Yeah. I don't know who got, who gave you this information? Who like, who... who advisors, ga- literally advisors from the UK because I contacted a bunch of them. Firms or like real firms? Yeah, like the university advisors. Yeah, they do offer a foundation year. They, but they might have some requirements that... There you go. Now so, you tell me this. I mean, I thought, I thought they did, and I probably... It's not too late to still apply. 
What I've only got on my visa. I'm, I've only got like everything ready and set and done. It's a phone call. The worst they can say is no. Why are you looking at me so confused? <laughs> no, because I'm like, wait. I'm like thinking. I'm actually thinking about it now. Okay. Okay, this interview. <laughs> This is not the interview. Is it, is it it's interview? a podcast. It's oh. a discussion. Okay. 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 This podcast. This, mm-hmm. this talk. It's I'm, entertainment. I'm going to go home and I'm going to change it, like my whole life story. My dad's going to be like, what the hell? What did you talk about over there? But yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm set on leads now. It's, it's set and done. I mean, I, I'm going to do the foundation here. And if I don't like it, I can always apply at different universities. You can always do the foundation year and then... and then Apply at different universities. Yeah. And then so like, that's what I'm going to... With at. Oxford, you'll have to do foundation year again though. They okay, won't let you. They I'm, they I won't let mind. you yeah. continue okay. on. Okay, let's let's see. Maybe maybe I'll end up loving Leeds, and I'll tell you I'll be like, you were wrong. Leeds was amazing. Then you're gonna look at me like that. <laughs> no, I'll just be like, for shit, what are you talking about? It's Leeds. Wait, <laughs> no, no. People in Leeds go to <laughs> How fucking. How exciting Le- is it? People in Leeds always go to London. <laughs> have you look? Have you looked at like how Leeds people look like? Type in Leeds boys <laughs> or Leeds men and they're in Leeds girls. Leeds men. What the hell? God. Or men, I think, probably better than boys. <laughs> yup. Yeah, see? They're like that guy there. Or chaps. Why Try chaps. Why is it on uh, footballers? C H. Oh my A-V. god. A V. Chaps. Yeah. But wait, aren't they everywhere though? Yeah, yeah. see? That's how, that's um, how people from Leeds look like. Fucking no. hell. No, oh my god. Shit. Ugh. I had a feeling because it's fucked my <laughs> What is he wearing? <coughs> oh my god. I had a feeling because when I spoke to my advisor, she sounded a bit weird and I was like, all the, gr- all the girls. Maybe it's just, just the accent. Maybe it's just the accent. Oh, like, yeah, it's, that's just the accent. <laughs> Fucking hell. All the girls from Leeds have like that. They, they all do that weird tan, you know, where they look orange like Trump. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. They all they all look like that. They all look like like a weird version of a female version of Trump, but women's uni hockey team. Yeah, clearly, fucking look like it. Fuck you know. Okay, I'm going next week. I'll tell you how it is then. <laughs> so any pictures of them, I'll be like, wait, is this what you meant? But no, Can are you... all of them like this though? It's, it can't be possible, right? Like. <sighs> It can't be that bad. It's fucking horrible. It can't be that bad. It's though. full of dykes. You know what a dyke is, right? What? Like a, like a, it's like a, what's the right, how's, what's the politically correct way to describe a dyke? Well, the word isn't politically correct to begin with. It's like a very butch lesbian. Oh. There's a word for that? Yeah, they're called dykes. What the hell? They, they throw like pub, stool, like pub stools at you and stuff like that. What you can try to look up with the dykes. A long... Okay, no. I don't think that's the word. No. D- just type in... Uh, I'm worried typing in... Oh, du- there, there it is. Yeah. A slur. Oh, that's, the, oh, that's disgusting and weird. What? Lesbians or the word dyke? The word dyke. Oh my god, not lesbians. They are weird. They're fine. They're oh, not fine. Plus. We're, this is not the region for LGBT+. Plus. This is not the exactly. region. This is not the region no, for it. No, but like, uh, let people live. Let dykes people on people. bikes. <laughs> <laughs> is that how they look? Yeah. No. Yeah. That can't be real. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. They look like... I shit you not. This is a true story. I was once at a pub in not a pub i was in a supermarket in birmingham <clears throat> and i was just like minding my own business looking at my phone or something and i accidentally tapped some guy on the shoulder it was a dude it was like do that and i just looked at him i was like I'm, I'm so sorry sir and i walked past and he turned around and he said it's not sir it's miss <laughs> <laughs> i thought he was pulling my leg oh i my looked God. at him and then he was just dead se- she imagine, was dead serious imagine she said it's not it's not he it's they it's they them I don't think Jews, lesbians. Jews, lesbians Jews. aren't into LGBTQ uh, uh, plus, by the way. Really? Yeah, they're not into like binary and non-binary and that kind of stuff. That's that's. 
and lesbians well look, um, well that's again that's unfair to say um the writer for harry potter jk rowling yeah she's like she, she's ag- but no she's not against lesbians she's against transgender people yeah she's she's in that weird what there's transphobic a, no there's a special term of feminists that don't like women trans trans women I don't know. And a lot of lesbians don't like trans women. J.K. Rowling. There's a lot of controversy about her. Yeah, it's, she's like transphobic. She's also phobic. It's like a weird type, type of femini- feminism. Mm-hmm. I forgot the name. I don't know what that what is called either. Do you know how many lesbian pubs, lesbian bars exist in America? How many? Give give me a number that you would if, that you would think. In all of America? Mm-hmm. Thousand? In all of America. Five. In all of America. Mm-hmm. Literally like the United States of America, so like every single state. Mm-hmm. It's only about five lesbian bars. What the hell? More rights for lesbians, guys. It's not it's not because of guys, it's because of trans. Because they've had to switch over from being lesbian bars to non-binary bars. And a lot of these, and a lot of these lesbians, <laughs> a lot of those lesbians don't like it that, that like, like pre-op women are showing up at their places. And they're calling it transphobic if a lesbian doesn't want to have sex with, with, with a pre-op woman. This is a whole. This is like. This, this is, is a strange. whole subgenre that I'm very familiar with. Yeah, that's. I'm very. I'm very like curious to know how you're so familiar with it, but. Well, because I get a lot of people from the younger generation who like to pretend they're woke, and so I like having. I like. <laughs> you like being. Like, you like being I like, with the crowd. No, no. It's. Um, can you look up the quote? Um, Speak softly, but carry a big stick. What? It's by a famous president. I forgot the name of the president, though. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Speak wow. softly and carry a big stick. Right. That's your that's your motto. Exactly. So I can, as as LGBT would put say, as LGBT would say, so I can clap back with them with the facts. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm very knowledgeable. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, it's it's very strange how he has so much knowledge on this, but. Good, good for you. Well, you'd be surprised. I get a lot of people who. You're where you walk. <laughs> who You're where you walk. No, that I definitely not. I'm not. I'm. I. I hate wokeism, but I. You need to know your enemy. So, <laughs> I make sure to be very familiar. <laughs> Yeah, so you're gonna you. I don't think you're gonna enjoy Leeds. Okay, you're such a negative Nancy. Let me at least go there. Let me see how it is. What if I ended up loving it and I became one of the chaps? Yeah. <laughs> would you take down this podcast for your? Why would I take it out? I you, we could do it before <laughs> and after. You... We can be like before leads and after leads. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm gonna see how it is. So if I don't like it, then I'm just like my course ends in May. So like I don't like it's not like it's so so long that I would. You know, I would be so stuck in it. Why are you doing business law? Okay, it's a long story. It's a long story. Because, so COVID hit, right? We're going to rewind back to COVID. COVID hit, and I had nothing to do it in the house. I was like, I'm so jobless. So I looked up internships in Bahrain. And there were all, obviously, internships in Bahrain are more of like, they're for literally grown people. They're not for like teenagers. You know how internships should be like for experience. It's more for like, literally like college graduates or like university graduates. So I looked up this internship um, and even though it wasn't advertised to like teens or young teens, I still applied. I was like, to hell with it. You know, let's, let's, let's see how it goes. And it was about like, um, I don't know if you know this company here. It's called Abayan Hill. It's a PR and design agency. And <laughs> you're gonna look it up. Mm. And they were doing like a thing called Women Who Read. So it was in my like, you know wait we had this didn't we we had another guest who came on dan to talk about women who read no yesterday, yesterday no no not yesterday. not yesterday yeah 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 she mentioned it i think really because literally we had another woman, author literally yesterday. the whole of women who read is what i did over there i started that account up from like literally the ground up and then so i was doing that and then the ceo she started another company called playbook and it was like a tech company. 
I swear to God, I thought you said Playboy. Okay, Playbooks. They started. <laughs> See, everyone gets that wrong, but yeah. So this is wow. That's all of literally, literally. I designed everything on this. So. Hey, that's cool. That's good stuff. Yeah. It's very summery colors. Yeah, I mean, it. We have to stay on branding, or else the CEO would literally chop my head off. So. And why did why do they chose orange teal orange? Uh, that's a question for them. Why are you asking me? Just gave me these because colors. it's your design philosophy, right? No, but like they gave me these colors, and they were like, "You have to stick by these colors. You cannot like stray away from these colors." And I was like, "Okay, okay, thanks, I guess. Oh, sure, why not? That's my hand. Look, that one. The, no, 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 go down. Do you see the the, the one with yeah, the nail, red nail? That's literally. That's my ring. Oh, see. <laughs> I have to zoom into that. <laughs> By the way, if you're an audio listener, um, go on the Instagram account of women who read on Instagram, and there's a picture of red nails with a ring, and yeah. <laughs> the red nails and the ring. I mean, we do give discounts, guys, to bookstores here. So if you become a member, you get discounts. So you get discounts. For what? The bo- for, for bookstores in Bahrain. If you become a member for women who read? Yeah. As a like- man? No, it's as a woman. I'm telling so the discount woman. is only for women? Yeah. So what did you think? That about? sounds sexist. So it's for women. What did you think? It's for women. So why are women getting women? discounts? That's go sexist. To, go to men who read then. There's no men who read. Because <laughs> so make one. That's, take the first step. <laughs> <laughs> take the first step. It's already, it's okay. We already dominate yeah, the industry. So yeah, then they started this company, Playbook. And Playbook. And over here it was like a lot of stuff with tech and legal stuff and uh, marketing stuff so they got me involved into this and when i started working on business and like business and marketing and like like law and like contracts and stuff we have her on coming on the CEO. yeah we have her coming on the podcast i think you do i think so yeah you do you have her so. coming on the podcast i think we, I she's think amazing we ha- she's incredible she's a street sir. I think she, we she have, has her own podcast too, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm 90% sure that we have her coming in October or end of really? September. Really? Because she's in London right now. But it's sometime like that. Either October, end of September. It's something like that. Hmm. That's really cool. No, she's, she's super incredible, by the way. She's, she's great. So she'll be amazing on the podcast. But yeah. So that's how I got into business management with luck. Because your boss? No, because of the company, the, remember the tech company, I did business in it. I did sure. In just it. because you did, did that. I mean, see, it, I did it. I loved it. I was like, wait, I want to do this as a career. I want to do this as a, like a full-time job. And so I'm going to study it now to do it as a full-time job. Yeah, but your reasoning doesn't make sense. That's like saying. Wait, oh. no, it does though. I enjoyed doing it and I only did it for like a, a more than a year. So people who enjoy working at McDonald's should what? Become a cook. With your, in your own reasoning, that would work. No, but like, I mean, if they want to, if they, if like cooking is something that they really, really enjoy. Like I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this so much that I was like, wait. But you enjoyed the PR aspect of it. I enjoyed, yeah, the PR aspect of it, but like mainly the legal stuff. I was involved in a lot of the legal stuff because like, you know, 17 year old, like she's, I don't have a law degree. They're not going to make me make contracts. Proofread. Yeah, not even just that, but like whenever they would have meetings with the you know the like companies or masters or like so they do master classes right on the playbook so when they would have meetings with the masters yeah so if you go on playbook yeah there it's like master classes with like women all over the mina region so they would have to have contracts and agreements with these women right i was involved in a lot of like the legal stuff of it and i really enjoyed it i enjoyed it so much that i was like wait i wish i could like know more about this so i could like understand it a bit more so i wanted to know more so i and you want to practice law where anywhere i mean okay so the aim is to stay in the uk and practice it there okay you're giving me a headache okay let me okay so you (laughs) you want to be a barrister yeah but no i want to do like corporate law it's like Okay, you don't know much about the subject, do you? Because a barrister is what a lawyer is in the UK. Oh, I mean, no, I know that. Okay. I know that. I know that because I saw it in a drama. Okay. <laughs> I watch Suits. I'm educated. I watch Suits, but no. Uh, in suits are set in America. Yeah, 
I know. <laughs> oh my god! But no, in all seriousness, I'm not the most educated on. Like, no, you know shit. Really? Okay, but no, in all seriousness, I'm not, and that is why I want to study it so I understand it a bit more. But um. But uh, uh, your reasoning is is very strange. See, if I don't like it. I wouldn't like study it any longer. Yeah, but you can you can self teach yourself if you just wanted to be a sake of a lawyer. You can you can teach yourself to be a lawyer. There are four states in the U.S. that that allow you to 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 sit the bar exam: you, New York, you, uh, California, yeah. and two Iowa and another state. That's good, but like, who's looking at the U.S.? I'm not. Like, you want to be a corporate lawyer? Yeah. Where do you think most of the world's finances is centered around? It's in the U.S. You're kidding. It is. Are you like? Is this? What is this? Uh, no, it is right. It is. Okay. It is. Are you being sarcastic or here? I don't know what this is. <laughs> no, I mean. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but why go to Cut. why why Cut. go to the UK if you want to practice corporate law? Go to the US then. This is an option. Like I'm not actually gonna practice practice corporate law. I'm just looking at options as of now. That's why I'm doing business management. Like if I want to go into the field of business, like HR or like business development, so I still have that option open. Okay. Yeah. Okay, About so you 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 want to work as like on the legal team of a company then? Yeah, that could be it. <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> no, I'm not see, certain. So that's why I'm still looking at options, right? I, I'm I'm still not sure what I want to like actually like. Maybe I'll study law and I'll end up hating it, because what I've seen right now is just like fluff, right? Like I've only been involved in like parts of it, and I like those parts. But so, what if I only like those parts, and then when I actually study like the hard part of it? I'm like, what the hell? Why so did I take this? Why didn't why didn't you just like go on LinkedIn and message like medium to high end lawyers or barristers in the UK and say, hey, you know what? I do a show, I do a podcast, I do whatever. I'd love to interview you, blah blah blah, and then gotten some inside scoops about how it is to work in that industry. Okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> you look at me so confused. Because no, you're like, oh, why didn't you? But I didn't know that this this was a thing. People message people and they're just like, uh, hello, can I want to interview like... You came on the show, didn't you? Yeah, but like this is an actual podcast, right? If I tell people, oh, I'm going to interview for my podcast, I don't have a podcast. So start one. It's only a Zoom. Press record and that's it. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I don't want you look at me like that. I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, you're speaking a lot of sense. No, that does make sense. Okay. Like LinkedIn is such a good place. And I'm thinking like, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of reaching out to them on that? It makes you wonder. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Thank God for you. If I never you did get this the joke. podcast. You didn't get the joke. It's okay. <laughs> if I didn't do this podcast, I would have never known. Oh my God! Okay, so who's who's your favorite author? Let's get into your books. Favorite author? There's so many. It's like so many authors. Emphasize on so many. But if you want to talk about my favorite author, it could be there's Ali Hazelwood, there's Emily Henry, there's Dan. D they all write romance, by the way. So I don't know if you actually want to look that up and look at like a bunch of dudes on a cover. And we already looked at dykes. So, I mean, yeah, all hell's gone loose. We have no Ali control. Hazelwood. This is gone. She's really good. I love Ali, Ali, Hazel Ali Hazelwood. Oh, yeah. Ali Hazelwood. No, no, that's not the spelling. A-L-I. Earlier, you didn't know how to spell chapter. It's clearly C A T. <laughs> Space, H, A, Z, E, -R. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't know if you want to actually look at that. That's what I was talking about. But yeah, her books are amazing. <laughs> Why do I have to make that such a big... This book was great, by the way. It was, gr it was good. It's fiction. 
I like how I like I like how his eyes are so confused. <laughs> it was it was like that. He's so confused, was... and I like the signs. The signs is, is what's happening in the background. That's that's some important stuff. There's there purp, both scientists. There's pink. There's pink. There both scientists. Uh, he's a PhD uh, professor, and she's a PhD candidate. Ooh, yeah. teacher with a student. This, they are how, both roommates. How, how, They're both roommates. roommates. Clearly not kosher. <laughs> yeah. It's, wait, you, oh yeah, Love on the Brain. That one's good. That one's a good one. It's set in NASA. It's set in, freaking set in NASA. Like, he's a, she's a neuroscientist and he's like an engineer. And they're working on a project in NASA and they fall in love. I feel like she has Ow. issues. <laughs> no, she's she's actually the author works in STEM. I feel like any author that like has like blue hair, that's like that's like a red flag. I had red hair for a long period of time. Red hair, I don't think it's is that much of a red flag. I think blue not hair here. is definitely a red flag. You will find no trace of my red hair on this account. You'll find it on my private account. <laughs> Can you type in controversy? I want to see if 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 she's not. She's she's really really nice, but people think all of her books. Is, <laughs> I want to see. The same. I, I, I People feel think the plot is the same, but it's actually all of them are based in like the STEM or like the STEM setting. So. I I feel like she's. <laughs> Lol. I feel like she she's like very woke. <laughs> it's loving. What is this? <laughs> oh God. I feel like she's. She Can a forty-year-old <laughs> read the love hypothesis? Can a thirteen-year-old read it? Answer that. Oh, Colleen Hoover, guys. Who who asked that question onto Google? Was it a parent or was it a fourteen-year-old? I think a, an actual, <laughs> an actual parent or something. You think right? it was a parent rather than the? Yeah, because I've seen it on books before. Parents are like, "Can I can I buy my child this book?" And I'm like, "It's a book. Buy it. Go ahead. What is he What is he gonna do with the book? Even if it has a lot of shit that." It's unrealistic. Let, it, let the child read it. Let it read it. Let, oh. I mean, let him read it. Let it read it. Get what I mean, right? Like, a lot of people think, oh, it's so fiction. That Is that how you convince people to read my Kampf? What's my Kampf? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, you mean my You know what I heard? My Kampf. And I was like, what the hell is My Kampf? My Kampf is the book from, from Adolf Hitler. Can you type in um, Henry Ford? He also wrote a book. Oh, these are all like boring people. Boring people. <laughs> the, the man who gave us cars is the boring person in your mind. <laughs> I mean, he's no Ali Hazelwood. She gave us STEM novels, STEM romance novels. Ali Hazelwood? Car. The car guy. Car. Because Ali of Hazelwood, STEM. Because of Henry Ford, we have, we have Saturday and Sunday free. <laughs> because of Ali Hazelwood, we have books in STEM that we don't need, but it's good. For the Modern education comes from Henry Ford. STEM. Yeah, you can keep saying STEM. Look at that. Look at that swagger dude wait, compared wait, to that. Wait, go back. It look how like, swagger he looks. It looks like the Peaky Blinders for some reason. What are you on about? You don't know the Peaky Blinders. No, clearly. I'm not part of your generation. I don't know what these things are. I mean, uh, old people watch it too. I'm not that old. I'm 30. That's old. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. See? No, he looks like he looks like a wimp compared to Henry Ford. No. Look how dab. No, you can't he looks. say that about. What's his name? Self Humphrey. Henry Ford is his name. No, the other guy, the Peaky Blinder dude. I don't know. <laughs> dude, what is this? Can you imagine? Can you imagine rocking up, rocking up to your date with this car <laughs> in a golf and cart? And cars. <laughs> Can he go to the one just below on the right? There he is with, with like, <laughs> date night. <laughs> Wait, was he married? Henry Ford, yeah. I, I, I think he was bitching. Ew. <laughs> Why are they old? Because, you, you, what do you, I mean, what do you want from him? To be immortal? Yes. That is, he should be, I don't know his name. Is it in Sil Humphrey? Sil Humphrey? Something with Sil. 
This guy, this guy. Isn't our Cillian Murphy? Yeah. Are, isn't this isn't the the Peaky, Peaky Blinders based on uh, the Hodge Hodge Quinn it's, it's, twins? It's I think like historical United Kingdom. Is it? Is it's it the based Brits? on two twins who went to jail and stuff like that. Oh, no. No, no really. it's not. That's the Mendes brothers. Is he talking about them? It's called the Hedge Hedge Hedge. They're oh, twins, right? Ew, what is this? The Greys, yeah, 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 yeah. They're pretty mental back in the day. Yeah. Sick movie. That's very nice. Well, that's that. That's very nice. You should read uh, Woody Allen. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, you still should read Woody Allen. Wait, look it up. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> him, him. Yeah, he's he's, he's a fantastic oh, writer. Oh, he he made Midnight in Paris. Yeah. Woody Allen, good. He he married his daughter. Stepdaughter. Stepdaughter. Still good. No, no, no. <laughs> That's bad. Wait, no. Step, wait, stepdaughter, stepdaughter. Right? Yeah. So they're not blood related. No. So it's a good. Okay, good for them. Yeah, so it's not incest. It's, it's, is that his stepdaughter? Yeah. Um, then bad. Why would you want to marry that? Whatever that is. Is that his stepdaughter? When she was young, yeah. Wait, no way. Wait. Okay, that's bad. If he's looking at her growing up and then he's marrying her when she's all grown up. Well, they're happy. Who cares? Wait, no. How old is he? He looks like he's on his... He's in, in his 90s now, I think. Okay, yeah. He looks like he's in his 90s. It looks like he's like literally going to pass away. Any minute. He's a fantastic author. Woody Allen is 86. Yeah, mm, close. No, no, bad, bad. Why is he marrying his stepdaughter? They've been happily married for 40 years now. How old was she when she married him? 18. I think. Uh, four? Uh, is it no, four? 18. And how old was he? In his 40s, I think. Yeah, that's bad. That's like age gap daddy, older man. No, no. Stay in school. Don't do this. Only, only read Ali his <laughs> Only read her. Why can she That's do this? Good. <laughs> she didn't do that. How do you they're know? All, they're all like, they have like a two year, three year age gap. That's good. No. Don't be, have you seen that couple on TikTok? It's like this old woman and a very young dude. Okay. She, you should look them up. Wait, it's, it's so, it's so bad. Cause the woman, she's literally. A cougar. I think, yeah. You no, know, and she's in her seventies and the guy is like in his twenties. Okay. No, 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 no. He's in it for the money. Why are you looking at Age of Ultron? Why are we looking at Avengers? They're hot though. But wait, look up this. Uh, look up what's his name? His name is Quran, by the way. The guy's name is Quran. Quran and uh, Cheryl. Cheryl. With the with the C, with the C. Cheryl with the C. Um, yeah, that's them. <laughs> They're happily married. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's in for a bit of money, right? No, she's not even rich. He's not even rich. They're both like living by. But they used to work. I don't work think he's working. No, they used to work in a restaurant together and he was 15. And she was like in her 30s. And they met there, like they met there and then they married. It's so disgusting. Ooh. I mean, see, even if she's old, he's, she's hot. So it's okay. That makes it fine. Wait. What's the actor's mom? name again from Matrix? Is yeah. that his mom? Keanu Reeves' girlfriend is is bizarre. People are we people are celebrating. I mean, it ain't right. It ain't right. Wait. <gasps> wait. How old is he? He looks as old as her. Mm, to be fair, they're, I think they're close to. They're about the same age. So, mm, but she, but she doesn't take care of herself. Fifty-eight. Okay, how old is she? Same, I think she's a little younger, about the same age. Girlfriend age, look, it's a second one! <laughs> age appropriate. She's 46, she's literally younger than him. Age appropriate. How, how is this possible? How is she younger than him? Because she's not taking care of herself. Look at that. She got stuck in the major. Yes, <laughs> seriously, right? Seriously.
Keanu, wake up. You can get anyone you want. You don't need to, you don't need to go with uh, the at switch. That age, at that age might be debatable, but. What do you mean at that age it might be debatable? What are you talking like, about? Now he looks a bit older, you know. He starts, he's starting to look his age, so. Who are you talking about? Keanu? Yeah. He doesn't look like he's 50. He's starting to. You can see it. You can see it on his face. Look closely. Zoom into his face, please. See? You can see it. You can see the ring. This is a low-res image. I don't know what you're trying to show me. I'm talking about this one. Yeah, yeah. See, you can see it. You can start seeing the, 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 the wrinkles on his eyebrows, the grays in his beard. You can start seeing it. You are totally wrong. Agree to disagree. No, Keanu Reeves, immortal. <clears throat> Never mind. Never mind. She's, she looks like, they look the same to me. To me, I mean, I mean, age-wise. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wait. Thank you very much. No, that does not look anything alike. But first picture on the left. That's right. No, look at him in the look at him in two thousand three. Look at him in. Look at him in fifteen thirty. That's not even him. Oh. You know that. <laughs> Oh God, okay. No, I'm a bit, I'm a bit lost today. But no, see, he doesn't look the same. He, he's starting to look his age. He's starting to look his age in 2017. Nah, he's immortal. No. Yeah, I think so. No, he's not. No. See, his beard is still black here, but. He's immortal, clearly. No. He's old. Oh, that's from John Wick. Jesus. 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 <sighs> I haven't laughed like that in a while. Okay, so we're, we talked about your book. We talked about university. We talked about you wanting to potentially go into the world of law. <laughs> or more like, you told me and I was like, huh? Okay, that's the thing. Huh? Okay, that's the thing. Okay. So tell me about poetry. Poetry. Tell you about poetry like... I have not. I'm a complete philistine okay. when it comes to poetry. So poetry is literally just like I mean, people interpret interpret it differently, like what their definition of poetry is. For me, poetry is more of like an like a way of expressing someone, like someone's thoughts or someone's feelings or someone's you could say someone's thoughts, feelings. Yes, but also someone the way someone looks at someone else. So, yeah, poetry to me is just about expressing yourself. So how is poetry it. different than Literally normal like writing. writing? Yeah. See, that's the thing. So um, when I read out the prose that I read out for my book, you saw how it was super simple. It was like, it was so like simple and just one line or two lines. So it's just that. It's a thought that I wrote out and it's poetry. So anything that is like a stream of consciousness is poetry? I mean, you do need to like word it in a proper way and it needs to like go together. You know, it needs to be a suffocated, like it needs to be a proper sentence, obviously, like in a suffocated manner. But yeah, your thoughts are your poetry. Okay, like the old adage is that poetry has to rhyme, right? But that doesn't really yeah. apply. I mean, it does have to rhyme, but not really. See, again, people don't like, even if you like look at poetry, like, modern contemporary poetry people don't make it rhyme people just write what they write uh, uh, yeah uh, okay if you want to make it rhyme then it's your choice again too you know but i don't i personally don't like you know how people like i have friends who are writers and they if they're writing a poetry piece they literally go out of their way to change words in the in their thoughts like if they just penned it down they would go out of their way to change certain words and make it rhyme, even though the original set, like piece sounded way better than the rhymed one. They would still be like, no, it rhymes now. Now it's better. I'm like, what? That does not make sense, you know? What you wrote first was also poetry. You could just use that. But no, they wanted to make it rhyme. And it's just, again, it depends on person to person. If you want to make it rhyme, you make it rhyme. If you don't, what you write is also poetry. Are you confused? 
I'm not talking like you, you can't just write baseless sentences and call them poetry. It doesn't work like that. There has to be some like some sort of like explanation behind what you write, you know? But yeah, your thoughts are your poetry. Or at least I think of it that way. That's 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 a that's a quote that's good enough as a tattoo. I think your your thoughts are your poetry. I feel like that's that's somebody already said that. As soon as Dan's filled up with finish filling up his water, we can look that up. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> this is this is one of the weirder shows. <laughs> Which one? Who? Hers or mine's? No, the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, your thoughts are your poetry. I feel like somebody already wrote that. Did someone? I feel like that's... Shit, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I feel like that's like, like... You need to delete, yeah. Thoughts are your poetry. What? No, no one wrote it. Well, that's good enough to... to Copywriting put it, it right now. Yeah, that should be your it. Instagram handle. That should be on your bio. You can't see that anymore, guys. Well, we're not going to. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera and saying it. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> <laughs> I know you won't. You don't even know what's poetry, so it's, it's not like you're going to steal it. No, I have no... I mean, the, the, I only know two poems in, in the... I think, do I know more? No, I only know two. Uh, one is, um, I'll, show you th I'll, sh I'll show you fear and a handful of dust. It's by That's Wasteland. Good. It's, the poem's called Wasteland. It's by, can you look it up? I think it's C.K. Elliot. I'll show you fear and a handful of dust. That's a good one. I like it. Yeah, there it is. The second one, I think, yeah. Okay. And it's by T. analysis S. of the famous line Elliot. from the Wasteland by T.S. Eliot, not C.K. Eliot, my mistake. Yeah. Can you type in Wasteland? Let's see the full poem. It's pretty long, it's pretty long I think. Ooh. Yeah, actually, poems, like, even the length of the poetry piece or, like, the poem piece, it depends on you, honestly. I have pieces in the book which are two pages long. And wow. then I have pages in the book that are literally one line. I think this poem is really long. 24 pages. Wow. Okay, wow. That's not a poem anymore. Yeah. That's a prose or something. I don't know. Wait. Just stop at a random section. I just, I'll read it out one of the sections. Else. It, it's called the death, a word for it. The death by water. Petal, I can't even read that. O thou bucket me out, O Lord. Pluckest. Pluckest. Burning. Burning, burning, burning. Yeah, see? I don't, I don't see, even. See, it doesn't make sense. That's poetry. So these I are his even, thoughts. These are his thoughts that he put into this book. And you don't understand it. Even I don't understand it. But he, know, he knew what he wrote, right? And people out there who's watching this are, are pulling their hair, hair out and being like, I fucking know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> and those two idiots are looking at this being like, I don't, I don't know any of this. But no, see, this is, this is poetry. The it's river random, sweats, oil and tar. The barges the drift, drift, the turning the tide. tide. Red sails white, white to leave our swing on the heavy spar. The barges wash, drifting lods, logs. Down Greenwich Reach, past the Isle of Dogs. Oh, oh this is in London. <laughs> what is that? Uh, uh, you know the first two lines? Uh-huh. <laughs> I heard it, yeah. <laughs> but the Isle of Dogs is, is, uh, is in London. Pretty nice. So see, it's his thoughts. Your thoughts are your poetry. The other one I can think of is No Man is an Island. Can you type that in, Dan? Ooh. No Man is an Island. It sounds... It's written in Old English. By John Doe, yeah. Okay. No Man is an Island, entire unto itself. Every man is a pea, is a piece of a continent, a part of the main. If cold be washed away by the sea, Europe is lesser, as well as if the... Uh, pron Promonit, pre, I can't even read that word. Promon, promontory. Promon, promontory. Promontory, where as well, uh, um, manner of, of thy friends or thine own were. 
any man's that diminish, me. diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind and therefore never sent to know for whom the will tolls, it tolls for free. See? Poetry. <laughs> That's the only two poems I, I know in my collective. Very good. Knowledge. Should we should read more You're books? You're welcome, I guess. <laughs> no. You should read more though. You should read more books. I read plenty of books. <laughs> I don't read poems. No, I mean like you should read more poetry books. Why though? Just read them. <laughs> but why? <laughs> Just read them. But why? Just read them. No, honestly. You should. It's it's a it's a really you could say interesting genre. I mean for me it is. But no. You should read it. So what? You like you Who knows you might end up loving it. <laughs> and we might see you like write as well. Why do you say that with a smile on your fucking face? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm trying to convince you. Oh, that's convincing. Okay. <laughs> what you started at twelve with yeah. with your first poem. What mm -hmm. inspired you to write it? School. School. Kids. But yeah, but why poem though? Mean. Why not painting? Why not like any it's a other good question? But see, I've. You could say that because writing came easy to me. Painting, I, I had never been into like colors and painting and I suck at it. I suck at art. But writing always came easy to me. Like even if, even before poetry, like before I even knew what poetry was, you know, when you're younger, you have like a diary. I used to like have diary entries. I used to like write, today I went to school. I came home, mom fed me this. I had this, then I went to sleep. Good night diary. And then I used to like repeat the process every single day. So I was always into writing since the beginning, since I don't know. Since I was old enough to write, I guess. And yeah, that's why poetry came easy to me when I was 12. Because that was the only way like, I sort of understood, okay, this is how I want to express myself. Uh -huh. Poetry. That's cool. Do you, <laughs> want, do you want to show the audience the two books? Yeah. Okay, which camera? Okay. This is the first book. It's Words for Bullets. Go on, sell it. <laughs> you want to see the pictures inside? So you, just look at this. Okay, look at the first book. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then look at the second one. Look at the improvement with the formatting, the text. This is the second one. Look at the formatting. This is, this is literally a water garden city. Okay. In Bahrain. So, yeah. It's like a huge... Uh, you could say a huge like accomplishment for me. Both of these books are, but this one more because it's like an improvement from the first one. It's like, look at me, I grew. I'm better now. Wait, so you're not perfect as you are? <laughs> oh, we went full circle. That's coming to that bite was... me back in the ass. Oh God. Full circle. Guys, you're not perfect the way you are. Please stop slouching. Get up now, watch this podcast and then go. And buy the book. Buy the book. Yeah. Come back. Buy two books. Book. Give it to your friends. Yeah. Buy it. Buy both books and buy like five copies of them of each book. Come back. Watch another podcast. Go home. Work out. Watch another podcast. Eat food. Watch another podcast. You sound like Andrew Tate. <laughs> you, you, no, guys, no. Don't watch it. Don't watch. Don't watch the podcast. Don't watch the podcast. Or no, don't watch Andrew Tate. Don't watch Andrew Tate. Bad. So you wouldn't go on Andrew Tate's podcast? No. So if I could make that happen, get you on Andrew Tate's podcast, you wouldn't want to go on? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kindly declining the offer. No. He's just... Too bad. <laughs> God. But no, he's literally, for like, in seriousness, he's like, literally like a, what do you call it? A fungus on this world. He should just be... Wiped off. Why? Why do so many like people hate him? He's just putting like thoughts into, especially like younger boys' heads. That like the type of mentality that he follows. That you know, women suck, men good, men better, women submissive, women you know. Yeah, but if he was a priester or an imam, nobody would like talk shit about him. Nope. Uh, no. Okay. No good priester or imam would go out and say all this shit. What? I mean, Plenty no do. Good. I mean, if you want to go into religions, no religion talks about women or 
even men that way what they don't they don't like push women down or like uplift men which religion does that christianity islam no, taoism no. buddhism no they don't it isn't a, isn't there a section in the bible that tells it says that you shouldn't beat a woman with a stick that's bigger than your thumb or wider than your thumb Wait, is it in the Bible? It's in the Bible and in the Quran. It's also in Judaism. This is not like new, like, like, this is not new discovery. <laughs> Maybe you should go to Pakistan and <laughs> just check how that place is. No, but I don't know. Because this is all like Western mentality. That's what's like, like, like changed all that. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna die on that, on that topic. You know, I'm really worried. You know, after all these comments, I'm I'm not lying to the, to the listeners, and I'm not lying to the people here. I'm fucking worried of getting on a flight and going to America after all the comments I made. They're gonna, they're gonna I'm, catch you. I'm they're so gonna catch scared. you at immigration and do like an extra check on you. You know that, right? Fuck extra check. They're just gonna put me in a fucking box for, for, for eight they're, hours. They're gonna catch you. They're gonna put you in a like for an extra check, and then they're gonna be like, pull up the podcast. What are you doing here? Yeah, I feel like. What it. are you doing here? I feel like it. I feel like it. I feel like we're we're. In, I feel like I'm in so much shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say about your books? No, no. Anything else you want to sell? <laughs> no. You make it sound like I came here. Guys, buy the books. But yeah, no, that's it. Thank you for watching. Well, pleasure. Have fun. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, keep watching pleasure. the podcast. Thank you so much. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on. Wee! Right, should we do the pictures? Thank <laughs> you.